and gentlemen, good afternoon. The State University of New York Upstate Medical University College of Medicine is happy to welcome you to our commencement ceremony. Today, we are part of a proud tradition in medicine. Today, we share your joy and pride. As a courtesy to your neighbors, please turn off or silence any cell phones or beepers. We will now start our ceremony with a video about SUNY Upstate Medical University. We are. We are Upstate. 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 We are Upstate. We are Upstate Medical University. Four colleges, one university. My name is Taylor Solek from Upstate's College of Nursing. I'm an RN in Upstate Surgical Trauma ICU. Every day I provide care to patients and families facing life-changing circumstances. I'm staying at Upstate to get my master's degree as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner to continue providing emotional support to patients and families. My name is Matthew Moyd. I'm in the College of Health Professions Physician Assistant Program. My work as a phlebotomist with underserved populations has led me to Upstate, and I'm eager to work with communities in need. My name is Olesia Kozokar, and I'm in the College of Graduate Studies. I want to use my research to unlock the unknown and find cures and treatments for infectious diseases. Upstate has been my home away from home. My lab is like my second family. I am Brandis Pearson. I'm a social worker, I'm a nurse, I'm a mother. And now Upstate has prepared me for my next goal, addressing healthcare disparities around the block and around the world. And that's why I travel to Ghana. My name is Gabrielle Rotaccio, and I'm graduating from the College of Medicine. I chose Upstate because of its rich history of women in medicine. To carry on the legacy of pioneers such as Elizabeth Blackwell and Sarah Logan Fraser is very inspiring. My goal is to become a clinician educator, to train and teach medical students to become the healers of tomorrow, improving the health of the communities we serve through education, outreach, biomedical research, and healthcare. United in expertise. Compassion and hope to create a healthier world. A healthier world for all. For all. For all. We are Upstate Medical University. Four colleges. Four colleges. Four colleges. One university. One university. And now, please rise as we introduce the Upstate Graduates of the Year 2018. The procession is led by the Chief Faculty Marshal.
Dr. James Greenwald will now sing the national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet Every time Dr. Greenwald does that, I get chills. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Julio Licinio, Dean of the College of Medicine. Today's a very special day. We celebrate uh, many accomplishments and look forward to your next adventure. The class of 2018 has distinguished itself in many ways. Your class has been a wonderful partner in teaching and learning, and you have been impactful mentors to the students who follow. On behalf of the leadership, faculty, and staff in the College of Medicine, I want to tell you how honored we are to have been part of your journey, and I want you to know that we are proud of you. It's a little awkward here because I want to look at them, but I also want to look at the families. But before I go much further, I wrote my remarks based solely on the students but there may be a few hardy souls here who are here completely on their own, but I think that most of you have, are here thanks to the help, support, and nurturing from your family and friends. So I'd like to ask you to stand up and give a round, uh, round of applause to your family, friends, and people who are here for you. You should be proud from uh, having graduated from upstate. We are 184 years old, have been founded in 1834. And Elizabeth Blackwell, the first female physician in US history, graduated from our medical school in 1849. We are not only the biggest provider of healthcare in the central New York region, but we are also the biggest provider of healthcare providers, like these wonderful people here. Um, I'd like to spend just a few minutes to give uh, some examples of what our alumni have accomplished. So people who are graduating here from this class can and will accomplish wonderful things. So the four people that I chose to highlight are uh, Dr. Samuel Thier, class of 1960. So after graduating from upstate, upstate, he eventually became chair of medicine at Yale, president of Brandeis University, 
President of the National Institute of Medicine, President of the Massachusetts General Hospital, and then Founding President of Partners Healthcare in Boston. He was also Director of the Merck Company, Charles River Laboratories, the Commonwealth Fund, and the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Dr. Nancy Tarbell, class of 1979, became the C.C. Wang Professor and Chair of Radiation Oncology at Harvard, uh, Massachusetts General Hospital, and Boston Children's Hospital, and was, only, it was the first female professor of radiation oncology in Harvard's history. She was also uh, their Dean for Academic and Clinical Affairs at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Sharon Brangman, class of 1981, came back to upstate and joined the faculty in 1989. She teaches the next generation of health professionals at her alma mater in the care of older adults over the years with a focus on Alzheimer's disease across the region. And in that capacity, she heads the Center of Excellence for Alzheimer's Disease. On July 1st, she'll become the inaugural chair of our Department of Geriatrics, which are just opening now, with a mission for research in brain health and Alzheimer's disease. And she will also lead the NAPI Longevity Institute. A most remarkable example of our impact is provided by the Daly family. Dr. David, uh, Dennis David Daly, who is here with us today, can you stand up? Where is he? He's here, somewhere. <laughs> um, he's the president of our um, Upstate Alumni Association, and I hope that all of you join our Alumni Association and become very active there so we can keep track of the wonderful things he will be doing. Uh, Dennis graduated from Upstate in 1983. His father, Roger Darrell Daly, graduated from Upstate in 1955. And his grandfather, also called Dennis David Dale, graduated from Upstate in 1901. And I have here a facsimile of his notebook from Upstate from 1901 with all the prescriptions he was <laughs> taught to write. So, um, and uh, the fourth generation in the family, Ian Trevor Daly, graduated from Upstate in 2011. So we have here four generations of Daly's doing primary care for our region. Dennis Daly, the grandson, is on the board of directors of an independent primary care-based mode specialty group of 70 physicians covering 175,000 lives in Onondaga, Cortland, and Cayuga counties. So they cover more lives than the entire population of Syracuse. As you can see, exciting and different pathways are waiting for you. And in every case, my advice is for you to find out how you as an individual can make the biggest difference and go for that with all you have. As you start on your new journeys, you will once again find yourself to be the newest and therefore the least experienced members of the teams that you'll be joining. As a new intern is starting an emergency rotation in 1983, um, where I incidentally met my wife, or the person who subsequently became my wife, I was humbled that any assistant or health professional on the team knew so much more than I did when it came to just jumping in and instantly taking care of very sick or severely injured patients who just couldn't wait as they came into the ER. So you should embrace the fact that you'll be, uh, for a while, the least experienced members uh, of the teams that you'll be joining. Use this as an opportunity to shine and to absorb as much as you can. It won't be too long before you ascend to the top of your ranks, where you will be expected to be the expert. Don't rush this big responsibility, and don't lose yourself in the process. You have a strong foundation to build on as you leave the halls of, of Wise Cotton. Be confident in that, and, think, and seek to build on it one day at a time. Always keep the big picture in mind. Don't miss the important lessons of each encounter with each patient who will continue to be your best teachers. As I look back at my career, I realize now that I remember my patients and what they taught me much more than I remember the wonderful professors I had and what I learned in class 35 years ago. So um, before I finish, I'd like to say a few words that are not <laughs> kind of a uh, written and directly to the resident, to, to the future residents, but um, I don't know what to call it because yesterday were medical students and now you're doctors, but anyway. Um, and, um, and I was thinking through the day that I'm very proud of you, but um, I'm a psychiatrist, so we, 
look and live from examining feelings and how we feel about things. So pride is a very positive feeling and I have that towards you, but I also have a somewhat negative feeling that I'm a little ashamed to confess, and that's envy. So I wish I was one of you, and I wish much better that I was <laughs> sitting there with you than, than here. So I guess I have to um, confess that. And you may be asking yourselves, why do you feel that? Because I think medicine is the most interesting and exciting and noble profession, and I could not imagine being anything other than a physician. So you're just graduating from medical school, and you have so many pathways ahead of you that are you know, full of possibilities. So at this point, you can choose to be whatever you want to be, and you have wonderful uh, residences that you're matched to, but I began my career in internal medicine at one point in endocrinology, and I, at one point I thought, you know, this is not exactly where my passion is, so I went back and I did another residence in psychiatry, and here I am. So you can continue on your pathway, you can change it, and you can be anything. You can work in the, you know, in the upstate region where you would be very much welcome and we really need you here, but if you don't want to be in a rural area or in the North Country or any place that you would really make an enormous difference, you can work any place you want. You can work in Appalachia, you can work in London, England, you can work in Sydney, Australia, you can work in Los Angeles, in Chicago, in uh, New York City. And you can do primary care or you can do the most specialized procedures that you can dedicate your life to. You can take care of the sick and the needy and the poor or you can take care of the rich and famous, who also need to be taken care of, I guess. So, um, <laughs> you can uh, spend your life studying like a subunit of a molecule and win the Nobel Prize for discovering something really revolutionary in biology. Or you can study and dedicate your life to taking care of entire populations and to population health. So, um, the sky's the limit. You have every opportunity ahead of you and um, you're entering the most exciting profession of all, and that's why I would be one of you. <laughs> but um, I'm here, and I'd like to say that the most important thing uh, for you today is that you should celebrate. Today is a day of joy and celebration. You should enjoy yourselves, be as happy today as we are ourselves, absolutely happy, thrilled, delighted, and excited that you chose us, and you're entering, as I said, the most noble, exciting, and amazing profession of all. I just cannot imagine being anyone else than a physician, and I'm so excited that all of you are now my professional colleagues. And that's very important because up until yesterday I was the dean and you are the students, but now I'm a physician, you are a physician, and you're my professional colleagues, and I'm very happy for that. So um, we are better because you are here, and I look forward to learning how you, the class of 2018, will continue to distinguish yourselves and to make a difference in the lives of those around you. Congratulations. Well, Dr. Lucinio, we're glad that you are standing in that position. We appreciate that on behalf of Upstate. It gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Danielle Rocarina, President of the State University of New York, Upstate Medical University. So good afternoon, a couple of things. One, first of all, welcome. And as president, I, I will make some remarks that are synergistic to the deans, but others that really reflect the university as a whole. My first start is to, to say that I want to pay homage to the ancestral home of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy on whose land we stand. And we are so honored uh, today because we have so many incredible guests we have you, our students, we have families, and all of us know that this journey is a rigorous one. And without the support of those who love us and love, and that who we love, and who actually unfailingly believe in us, we wouldn't be where we are today. And we have distinguished guests that include our honorary recipients, and I've been here all day because I started with the College of Health Professions, the College of Nursing, the College of Graduate Studies, and now I'm with you. And being a physician, of course, this punctuates the day for me, although I have great respect for all of the professions. We're also fortunate 
again, to honor some folks who have helped us to rethink where we are. And um, I resonate with Dr. Lucinio's comments, which, were, which are ones of celebration and optimism. To take a look at the words of Carolyn Jones, who this morning talked to us about being a filmmaker and reflecting the lives of nurses. Or Jean, uh, Jean William Papp, um, a wonderful colleague who happens to be from my native country of Haiti, who has championed and believed in people so deeply that he thought that being from an economically extremely challenged country such as Haiti still offered great hope for the future. And Tracy Shenandoah, who is here and being my brother today in the ways he is sharing with us mindfulness and a feeling of peace, which is probably what we all aspire to. And then our dear colleague and trustee, Eunice Lewin, who promised me from the day I got inaugurated that she would be here, and there she is. And I, I really thank you for being here in support of Upstate Medical University. So I am taking a look at new beginnings, a commencement, and trying to have some reflections with you that certainly date back to the time when I chose to be a physician. And maybe you can think back for a moment as I pause, what made you come here on this long journey, okay? And think to yourselves what that decision was. For me, I remember it acutely. I was asked by a teacher, what do you want to do? And because I spoke other languages, they said, well, you'd be a great interpreter. And I knew that wasn't my calling. And I said, out of the blue, I'm going to be a physician. And somehow stuck to that. Somehow stuck to that. And so for where you are, the choices that you've made, and I'll comment on that later, uh, we're really grateful that you made the, those choices. And we are here, not only today, and hopefully we've been here through your training, but throughout your career as good colleagues and fellow physicians, as Dr. Licinio said, in the journey that is sometimes really joyful and sometimes pretty challenging, okay? So I want to recognize the four colleges. And the reason I say that is because in the 21st century, medicine is a team sport. For the physicians in the room, but also for the families, you know that. You know that um, medicine has such a, a wealth of knowledge that no one individual can really harness that and provide the care that is compassionate, that is the latest cutting edge science, apply it with precision and specificity to individuals. That takes real art, and that art comes. If I had the time, I would do an interactive session and ask how many musicians are in the room, but you know that to orchestrate the best you must come together to do that. And so I do speak to you, the graduates, our fellow physicians, to say, play great music together as you learn this craft. Um, takes me back. Again, Dr. Lissinger, I'm going to blame you for making me think of my past because you commented on that, OK? So my favorite thing, I'm a pediatrician by training, and I used to do two o'clock rounds where I would ask through the clipboard all of the most detailed things, and the resident would say, I can't do this at 2 a.m., what are you, nuts? But it was the love of medicine and being able to really get the diagnosis and really be able to send that child home that was the driving force. So I do digress a little bit, but I want to recap for family and friends of the College of Medicine. The course of study, which you know, but perhaps I, it's important to, re to reflect. In-depth classes in the basic sciences, and the professors here demonstrate that. Cell and development biology, biochemistry, physiology, as well as courses covering public health and the ethics in medicine. In the latter two years, clinical immersion in the care of patients, perhaps in an apprenticeship model, in which we're reviewing what's the best way to, to teach. In the very last years of study, the typical experience includes the preparation to enter internship. So sub-internships that allow you, the students, to act in the role of an intern, that is one with a medical degree but not yet licensed, followed by internship at the end of one year when you assume the responsibility of a licensed physician. 
and are deemed a resident, an old name, and you know where it comes from, right? Because you did not leave the hospital in the old days, right? You li lived and breathed that, and every day, day and night, the care of the patients was your commitment. We have evolved because we know when we're really tired, perhaps we're not the greatest healers, so we have evolved. So the question I posed throughout the day was, um, have we prepared you well? Now, I think Dr. Lucinio answered that question. So although I posed it this morning after a full day of being here with all of you, I've evolved in my thinking, which is good, right? Yeah, it's good. So um, I want to share with you the excitement of medicine in the 21st century. And the students here have begun to t a taste of that medicine, but I believe we're still evolving. One is a curriculum that starts the clinical years earlier. Dr. Licinio and I had many conversations about how do we teach applied concepts in the healthcare so that we really um, uh, translate the basic sciences into the care of patients and begin to make a difference in outcomes. I believe among you, there are the scientists, clinicians, clinician researchers to make that impact with enthusiasm. A shortened curriculum. We do quite a lengthy thing. We think that liberal arts is important, and then we go to another four years. And then if I look at my own journey, I had four years, five years after that, three of residency and two of fellowship. So it's a long journey. And yet, while I want to stay optimistic, Dr. Licinia, you will allow me just a little bit of realism. The realism is that we need to really apply that to really begin to change the trajectory for many people for whom health is, has not been achieved. So that's a challenge, but that's an exciting challenge. You know, we are thinking about recruiting different types of students. You know, an example is students who write poetry and art and, and music and blended with the hard sciences lead us to more humanistic and holistic physicians. Elimination, would you like this one? Elimination of the MCAT? What do you think? Okay, that's not for you, it won't help you, but it will help the class after you. So, you know, what's the best way to gauge whether somebody is gonna be successful? A delay in the dreaded step one? How's that idea? Okay, very good. And then restructuring the learner-guided curriculum. We've done this already in flipped classes where we do a lot of the studying before and then we critically analyze the data. So I'm going to jump to tell you that we, we, we know that you've been engaged in many activities both within the university and outside, that you've, many of you have kept mindfulness in terms of the, the work that Dr. Nanavati talks about in terms of wellness, and that's really important for us to pay attention to our own souls and our own bodies and mental health. And then, my final thoughts are, certainly be aware of your environment, your families, what's important to you. Um, pause a few times before you jump so that you can reflect what's important. So I'm gonna modify a little bit of what I wrote earlier. My topic and theme was courage and taking stock. And I was in a, a little moody, all right? You ever have those days? Yeah. So I'll end with courage and commitment. Okay, which says that today, the words of wisdom, if I can impart any to you, is this is your day of commencement, of beginnings. Okay, it's a long journey. And um, that commitment can be displayed in many ways. So while your stethoscope that you train with now, we know, might be replaced by a bedside ultrasound, right? So I spend lots of times listening to heart sounds and deciding somebody's in congestive heart failure, et cetera. You're gonna have different tools than I had in my training. But one of the things we hope you don't lose is your heart. Because you came to us with heart. We know that. We selected you because of your heart. And so if we look at the word courage, okay, um, it is, the derivation is Middle English, courage from the Anglo-French courage, from cœur, cœur or heart, or the Latin more at heart. So you will need courage, for example, um, if there's a medical error, to really speak to a family with kindness and to share with them 
with humility and honesty what you need to do, or to respect a, pa a patient's wishes, even if you know that perhaps the evidence speaks against a different path, but that in order to achieve well health, wellness, you will have to have the patient guide that path to wellness. And I could go on to the many things that you will have to tackle as you enter the profession of a physician. I must say, however, I do not think that we as physicians are any higher than the dear colleagues that I celebrated earlier. We are all here together and trying to hold on to our ability to express kindness and respect for each other, and you will be entrusted I, and you already have been entrusted with the intimate details of people's lives. And I ask you with courage to honor that faith, what people will share with you, that they will share with no one else, and to uh, give that, to honor that. So thank you for accepting this challenge. You have lots to celebrate. I'm sure your families are thrilled to death that I did not talk about medical school debt. Okay, so thank you for accepting this challenge and truly congratulations. We are truly proud of all of you. And so now I'm looking at the people here on the stage. We move on to the conferring of degrees. Thought that might excite you guys a little bit. The degrees of, from the College of Medicine will now be conferred by President Barack Arena, Dr. Julio Licinio, Dean of the College of Medicine, and Dr. Christopher Morley, Chair of the Department of Public Health and Preventive Medicine, will present recipients from the CNY MPH program. Dr. Lara Karina, Dr. Morley, and I have the honor to present these recipients the degree of Master of Public Health. They have satisfied the requirements established by the faculty and have been recommended by the faculty for the receipt of this degree. Will all candidates for the Master of Public Health degree in the College of Medicine please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the State University of New York, upon completion of all requ requirements, I confer upon you the degree Master of Public Health with all its rights, privileges, and obligations. Please come forward to be recognized. Just so you know, in the audience, the hearts are pounding right now. Everyone's excited. Erica Bryson. Josue Dea Navarro. Jacobus. Hannah Jacobus. Emily Kratz. Taylor Cuzel. 
Nicolette Nunez. Omolumi Olari Muye. Karina Oliveira Wright. Anna Prince. Kirsten Rabinowitz. Tasnia Rasul. Nicole Richards. Megan Sovaku. <laughs> Sheila Singleton Best. <laughs> Amal Yehia. Dr. Samuel Michel. Dr. Lara Karina, Dr. Morley, and I have the honor to present these graduates who participate in Upstate's MD-MPH combined program, which over a five-year period allows students to complete the requirements of both the Doctor of Medicine degree and the Master of Public Health. These students have satisfied the requirements established by the faculty and have been recommended by the faculty for the receipt of these degrees. Will the candidates receiving both degrees, Doctor of Medicine and Master of Public Health, please rise. <laughs> by virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the State University of New York, upon completion of all requirements, I confer upon you the degrees Doctor of Medicine and Master of Public Health with all the rights, privileges, and obligations. Please come forward to be recognized. Dr. Brittany Gauss. Dr. Julie Pilater. Yeah. 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 
Dr. William Reed. Dr. Lara Carina, the Central New York Master of Public Health program offers a certificate of advanced study in public health. We now have the honor to present the recipients of the certificate of advanced study in public health. They have satisfied the requirements established by the faculty and have been recommended by the faculty for the receipt of the certificate. Will the students who have completed the certificate of advanced study in public health please rise? I offer my sincere congratulations. Please come forward to be individually recognized. Bridget Williams. Rohan Nanda. <laughs> Dr. Julio Licinio, Dean of College of Medicine, will now present the recipients of the degree Doctor of Medicine. He'll be joined by Dr. Rajesh Dave, Dean of the Binghamton Campus. President Lara Carina, I have the honor to present these recipients the degree of Doctor of Medicine. They have satisfied the requirements established by the faculty and have been recommended by the faculty for the receipt of this degree. Will all candidates for the Doctor of Medicine degree in the College of Medicine please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the State University of New York, upon completion of all requirements, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Medicine with all its rights, privileges, and obligations. Please come forward to be recognized. Will the first row of medical graduates please come forward?
Dr. Shivani Agarwal. Dr. Bushra Ahmad. Dr. Sangal Alazar. Dr. Omazona Amadi. Dr. Manu Aru. Dr. Jason Odlin. Dr. Michelle Bernstein. Dr. Michael Bavona. Dr. Jacqueline Blaber. Dr. Ajwa Bueni. Am I coming with you? Am I coming with you? You guys are close, right? Dr. Matthew Bradley. Dr. Stephanie Brannigan. Dr. Vasily Bushno. Dr. Timothy Bussert. Dr. Julian Capria. Dr. Cherry Shahal. Dr. Hannah Sharland. Dr. Benjamin Casola. Dr. Joseph Chin. Dr. Peter Cristiano. Dr. Peter Congelosi. Dr. Alyssa Cortez. Dr. Michelle Coughlin. Dr. Adam Custer. Thank you. Dr. Danielle Davis. Dr. Anudarya Dean. Dr. Jared Deck. Dr. Michael DeCourcy. Dr. Fremlin Quasi Decky. Yeah. 
Dr. Dr. Benjamin Dr. Benjamin Depot. Dr. Raymond Dahl. Dr. Luke Dombert. Dr. Kathleen Donovan. Dr. Alexander Edelstein. Dr. Victoria Fairchild. Dr. Gregory Fonum. Dr. Justin Faulkner. Dr. Zachary French. Dr. Aluko Gift. Dr. Kyle Hagenboo. Dr. Allison Hall. Allison. Dr. Sally Hartwick. Sally. Dr. Syed Hassan. Dr. Julie Henderson. Dr. Emily Hensler. Hereha. Dr. Vassil Hereha. Hey. Hey, Dr. Melanie Hunt. Isles. Dr. Kathleen Isles. Dr. Gabriela Aizo. <laughs> Dr. Imran Javed. <laughs> Dr. Sankarsh Jetty. Dr. Wayne Kang. You have to give us like my my grandfather's not gonna move up those stairs very long. Yeah, that's fine. Take your time. Dr. Thomas Kanea. <laughs> Dr. Jason Corellis. Dr. Thomas Kartika. Dr. Anthony Kashu. Dr. Becca Kaufman. Dr. Catherine Keenan. Dr. Asad Khan. Dr. Diane Kim. Alexander Kudo. Yep. 
Dr. Alexander Kruglov. Dr. Michael Cooker. Dr. Valerie Kaiser. Dr. Philip Lacombe. Dr. Samantha Lacroix. Dr. Jonathan Lee. Dr. Brian Leo. Dr. Matthew Lavasser. Dr. Jordan Levy. Dr. Guanxin Li. Dr. Nicole Li. Dr. Jennifer Liano. Dr. Shunjun Liu. Dr. John Lowfries. Dr. Mitchell Lyons. Dr. Jai Ma. Dr. Max McBarb. Dr. Jodhvir Mangat. Dr. Hannah Marmer. Dr. Zachary Mashaw. Dr. Cody McGee. Dr. Caitlin McGregor. Dr. Matthew McGurk. Dr. Mehek Mehta. Dr. Akil Mia. Dr. Gamel Mohammed. Dr. Donald Moore Jr. Dr. Demetrio Munoz. Dr. Hamza Murtaza. Dr. McKinsey Neggers. Dr. Christopher Nelson. Dr. Laura Nicholas. Dr. Idemar Nizviski Kogan. Dr. Ian Lee. 
Dr. William Nolan. Dr. Wale Udulate Williams. Dr. Steve Pamphiel. Dr. Evan Parker. Dr. Lee Pfaff. Dr. Abigail Phelps. Dr. Connor Policastro. Dr. Daniel Polson. Dr. Mary Powers. Dr. Sarah Rabis. Dr. Amariel Rabuski. Dr. Eric Reed. Dr. Taylor Remillard. Dr. Robert Reynolds. Dr. Rylan Richards. Dr. Noella Richmond. Dr. Joshua Rim. Dr. Matthew Ringer. Dr. Gabriella Ritaccio. Dr. Christopher Robles. Dr. Alexander Rodriguez. Dr. Alex Ronis. Dr. Brandon Rosenberg. Dr. Kareem Royce. Dr. Boris Ryabsev. Dr. Daniel Santarsiri. Dr. Dylan Saragatpur. Dr. Mark Seligson. Dr. Mary Sloan. Dr. Hannah Smith. Yeah. 
Dr. Stephen Smith. Dr. Caitlin Staring. Dr. Glenn Stewart. Dr. Mary Storm. Dr. Eric Sun. Dr. Anisa Tanikal. Dr. Alyssa Olsen Tiki. Dr. Michael Titchener. Dr. Michael Tonzi. Dr. Alex Trollenberg. Dr. Christopher Valenti. Dr. Frederick Verone. Dr. Haytham Wadi. He will be yours in a few minutes. Dr. Emily Wanamaker Gibbs. Thanks for holding me down with your family medicine. Oh, man, you got say, uh, Dr. Nico Wanko Agassi. Yeah. Dr. Nico Wanko Agassi. <laughs> Dr. Hannah Carol Worthington. Dr. Ming Chi Wu. Dr. Shung Chin Zhang. Dr. Justin Zhao. Dr. Robert Zeekman. I'll give you a moment to applaud if you wish to. Remember, remember I said a moment only. Thank you. Thank you. We still have a little more to go. The recipients of the two doctoral degrees, Doctor of Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy, will be presented by Dr. Mark Schmidt, Dean of the College of Graduate Studies, and Dr. Julio Lucinio, Dean of the College of Medicine. Dr. Laracarina, Dr. Lucinio, I have the distinct honor to present the graduate 
who participates in Upstate's MD-PhD program, which over an approximately eight to nine year period allows students to complete the degree requirements for both the College of Medicine for the Doctorate of Medicine and the College of Graduate Studies for the Doctorate of Philosophy degrees. These students, this student graduates as a physician scientist who by combining the practice of medicine in the clinic and biomedical sciences in the laboratory is uniquely trained and focused to bring the power of modern science to our understanding and treatment of human disease. Well, the candidate receiving both doctoral degrees, Doctor of Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy, please rise. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the State University of New York, upon completion of all requirements, I confer upon you the degrees Doctor of Medicine and Doctor of Philosophy. With all the rights, privileges, and obligations, please come forward to be recognized. <laughs> Dr. Zachary Oakes. The Physician's Oath, in the tradition of Hippocrates and Elizabeth Blackwell, which is printed in your program, will be administered to the medical graduates by Dr. Amit Damoon. Dr. Damoon has been selected for this honor by the graduating class. Will the medical graduates of the College of Medicine please rise? Will all medical graduates in the College of Medicine please repeat after me. I enthusiastically commit my life to serving patients. I I will practice my profession with integrity, dignity, and humility. The welfare of my patients will be my first consideration and I will advocate for them. May I never see in the patient anything but a fellow human in need. I will treat all patients with compassion, no matter how much they differ from me. I will preserve my patient's confidentiality and respect my patient's choices. I will work together with my colleagues in service of our patients. I will acknowledge my limits, maintain my skills, and seek help when needed. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude that is their due, be a role model for students, and share my knowledge with patients and colleagues. I 
I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. May I keep this oath, and in doing so, experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. be seated. I could have had them standing up for you guys for a little bit longer. Amal Yehia has been selected by the Master's Public Health Class of 2018 as their student speaker. Will Ms. Yehia please come forward? Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the day we have all been waiting for. It is a contemplation of our blood, sweat, and tears, but also what I consider to be some of my happiest memories. Because for every late night we spent in the library, there was the post-exam celebratory beer at Fagan's. We grew, learned, and laughed not only with each other, but with our faculty. And while today, many of us will be reaching what is our greatest milestone to date, I want us all to remember that while everyone is congratulating you, don't forget to thank them. It would be impossible to say that any of us could have gone through this journey alone. There was somebody along the way supporting you giving you emotional support, encouragement, sending you cookies. And whatever that was, you thank them today. I know for me, that person has always been my mother. She taught me that the only thing that no one could ever take away from me was my education. You see, my grandfather sent my mother and six siblings through school during the Lebanese Civil War. And valuing nothing more than their education, they did not miss or fall back on a single day of school. They each went on to attend prestigious American universities. And I'm sure that this room is filled with similar and yet different stories. Whether you're the first person in your family to graduate from university, whether you were raised by a single parent, or whether you were simply told that you couldn't do it. Whichever mountain you have climbed to be here today, I applaud you. <laughs> I have valued our diversity in interests and fields of work and future research and I can say I have also taken great pride in the fact that my own cohort spans the globe coming from all different cultures. We are from Nigeria, Scotland, Puerto Rico, Lebanon, Ireland, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Cuba, the former Czechoslovakia, India, and many more. And I hope that no matter where we find ourselves, whether back in our hometowns or even if we're half a world away, that we continue to have the courage to support one another because in the end, we will always be more similar than we ever are different. And so as we begin our careers, entering into an albeit imperfect healthcare system, the words of my father, stay hungry, stay humble, and always be the hardest worker in the room. They mean more to me now than ever before. And so to my class of 2018, may we have courage in the face of adversity. May we stand up for those who cannot do so for themselves. And may we remain unwavering in our universal mission for health equality. Congratulations, everyone. Go do good.
John LaFries has been selected by the Doctor of Medicine class of 2018 as their student speaker. Will Dr. LaFries please come forward? Hello. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming to the SUNY Upstate College of Medicine Class of 2018 Commencement Ceremony. Every person in this room today is responsible for our presence here on stage. To our families, friends, and significant others, my mom and dad and Nate, thank you. The college's faculty, staff, and administration, and the doctors, nurses, and residents who taught us so much, on behalf of the class of 2018, thank you. Thank you for your support, your advice, your guidance and mentorship. Thank you for encouraging us, for challenging us, and for celebrating our accomplishment. Without you, this would not be possible. <laughs> On our match day back in March, which now feels like forever ago, I learned that my classmates had made the questionable choice to have me speak to you all today. To the class of 2018, thank you for your confidence. Uh, the MedHub evaluation will be available later this <laughs> afternoon. Please take time to complete it. In all honesty, I'm not sure that I am fully qualified uh, to provide any advice to this group of incredible people seated beside me. As the time for graduation grew close, I found that while many of you were excited, happy, and confident, I felt the opposite. In one week, I will be moving across the country, away from the support network of family and friends that helped get me through the challenges of medical school. To start what will be, by all accounts, the most stressful and difficult time of my life. But I realize I am not alone in this situation. Some of you are also moving across the country. Uh, others of you are leaving family, friends, and partners. And all of us are starting residency. I imagine that many of you are feeling a similar mixture of complex emotions. So I thought I might say some of the things that I wish someone would say to me right now. The things I have been telling myself in moments of doubt these past few months. First, we are finally doing what we love. Never forget that. Right before the start of medical school, I remember feeling a similar sense of anxiety to what I feel right now. I feared that I would enter class on the first day and find all of the professors speaking in muffled voices like the teachers from the Peanuts, which everyone but me would be able to understand. Fortunately, none of that happened. In the first week of school, I remember sitting next to Sam LaCroix during a very dry lecture on carnitine transport. And at some point, when the excitement of all the cell regulation reached a fever pitch, I turned to her and blurted out, isn't it amazing that our cells are doing this all of the time and we don't even have to think about it? <laughs> to her credit, Sam continued sitting next to me for the rest of the semester, but I'm sure she questioned why I was in medical school. That childish zeal for medicine that got me through the first week here, which brought us all together here the first, in the first place, is not gone. And now there will be even more to inspire and amaze us. Second, this year is another beginning, and more will come. After today, we will begin the period of our lives that will shape our clinical practice. For some, that will be a three-year journey. For others, it could be seven or eight years. Sorry, neurosurgeons. But even residency is not the end. Beyond that, we will continue to take on other roles that define our careers as physicians. Medical educators, hospital administrators, healthcare policy experts, clinical researchers, nightclub DJs, the options are endless. <laughs> the conclusion of medical school today, though bittersweet, is a culmination of our achievements. There is no reason to be anxious about moving, leaving loved ones, or starting residency, because this too shall pass, and another beginning is right around the corner. Third, it will only get better if you make it better. As you are acutely aware by now, I am a strong believer in the power of quality improvement. I tallied the total number of survey questions that I've begged you all to answer over the past four years. Between MedHub, SurveyMonkey, and the AAMC questionnaires, it came to just over 2,300, so thank you. And from here on out, our role in shaping and changing medical care will only increase. It is our responsibility to ensure that healthcare is equitable, affordable, and accessible. Other mounting issues in our national and global society will inevitably, in one way or another, fall at our feet. The opioid epidemic, income inequality, the war on terror, racial discrimination, immigration and refugee resettlement, climate change, gun violence, gender inequality. These issues will reach our offices, clinics, and hospitals. They will affect our patients, our coworkers, and our families. 
we will need to consciously and thoughtfully address these issues. And by doing so, we can make a difference. I know this incredible group of people beside me is up to the challenge, and I know that they will find solutions to make healthcare better for all of us. Just remember to run some PDSA cycles. <laughs> Finally, it is okay to ask for help. I saved this one for last because I truly believe that the culture of medicine has to some degree wa warped all of our perspectives on the simple action of asking for help. Too often, doctors are led to believe that they should have all of the answers all on their own. We are made to think that asking for help is a sign of weakness. As a class, we have helped each other through more than just medical school, and we are all better off because of it. To all of you who shared your study guides on Facebook, sent out reminders about deadlines and opportunities, cooked meals and ran in the snow for our dear friend Alex Paley, thank you and please keep it up. We should be able to ask for help in four weeks, four years, and 40 years. I'm sure our patients and the practice of medicine will be better off for it. As I said at the start of this address, I'm not sure that I'm qualified to be providing advice to you all today, but I hope that these four points give you some of the comfort that they give me as we get ready to take the next steps in our education, careers, and lives. Congratulations, class of 2018. Go forth and do good. You're still with us? Yeah, I think so. All right, this, is, this continues to get good, okay? So enjoy it because this is certainly a moment to cherish and I'm really li living it right now. So today the State University of New York Upstate Medical University will award an honorary degree to Dr. Jean-William Papp. Mr. Thomas Taylor, Chair of the Upstate Medical University Council will read the citation SUNY Board of Trustee Member Eunice Lewin will confer the degree. Mr. James Sparks, Upstate Medical University Council Member, will assist me with the hooding. I hope we get that all right. <laughs> Jean-William Pop, your accomplishments as a distinguished physician and founder of the Haitian National AIDS Commission and as director of GESCIO, have influenced the lives of many and define you as one of the most gifted clinicians of your generation. You are renowned as a pioneer in medicine for your significant public health contributions in Haiti in addressing infantile diarrhea, AIDS, TB, and cholera. Your leadership has led to a 50% decrease in Haiti's national infantile mortality and to a similar decrease in the national HIV zero prevalence. Your global work in the establishment of rehydration therapy is now an internationally successful approach to the treatment for the common problem of infantile diarrhea. You have been unrelenting in your work to implement preventative programs for AIDS and tuberculosis in Haiti and other resource poor countries. You have also demonstrated that it is possible to develop successful national programs in the poorest countries and under conditions of instability and political unrest. Your vision profoundly affects the health of our global society while leaving your legacy as a great humanitarian of our time for creating a healthier world for all. You have the respect of your medical peers as evidenced by your numerous awards, notably given by the governments of Haiti, France, and the United States. For your skill, talent, and insight, illuminating the lives of others through clinical care, research, administration, and teaching, the State University of New York is pleased to confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Science. Given this 20th day of May, 2018, I have the honor to present Dr. Jean-William Pop as a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. invested in me by the trustee of the State University of New York, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, 
I confer you the degree Doctor of Science, honoris causa, and invest you with the rights and privilege pertaining thereunto. In token, therefore, I hand you this diploma and direct you that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree. My sincere congratulations. We will now hear remarks from Dr. Pop. Sonny Trustee Eunice Lewin, President Larac Arena, Council Members Thomas Taylor, James Parkos, the Dean Julio Ishinio, University Leaders faculty, students, and families. Thank you for this extraordinary honor. I'm deeply honored and humbled to receive this prestigious award on behalf of our amazing staff at both the Wild Cornell Center for Global Health in New York and the Gishu Centers in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I am especially honored to receive this award in company of Tracy. Spirituality and physical well-being are essential for a comprehensive health program. 2018 graduates, my new colleagues, you have all worked hard to get this diploma from a great institution. You are all men and women of science. As scientists, you must question everything. That is what makes progress move forward. Ignorance leads to fear, while science brings new hope and new knowledge. A physician is a man of science, but science without conscience is dangerous. Science should be centered on making the world better. A great example on how science conquered fear and prejudice goes back to how the world reacted to the AIDS epidemic. My generation was marked by the AIDS epidemic that was called in the early 1980s the wrath of God. It was blamed primarily on homosexuals, heroin addicts, and hemophiliacs. Society was scared. They needed to find a scapegoat, someone, an ethnic group, a country, to put the blame on them. Much like syphilis, which was called the French disease or the Italian disease, depending on circumstances. But AIDS was like nothing we had experienced before. It was much more frightening and dangerous because we didn't know what caused the disease. We didn't know how it was transmitted. It was spreading fast through the countries and continents. Early on, the disease was affecting young men and less often young women in their prime of life and decimating the workforce of the most affected countries. They blame it on the Haitians, who became the fourth H of the 4-H disease after homosexuals, heroin addicts, and hemophiliacs. Needless to say, the already anemic Haitian economy took a fatal blow. Tourism and exports goods took a deep dive. On a human scale, it was terrible. A professor at Cornell asked me if I thought that he should fire his cook, who was Haitian, and was his employee for over 20 years. Haitian children were not welcome in schools. They could not go to the school cafeteria. For a long time, Haitians could not donate blood. When finally the cause of AIDS and the modes of transmission were well established, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, removed Haitians from the so-called risk groups for AIDS on May 10, 1985. But it was too late. The damage had been done. During the first decade of this pandemic, 
a diagnosis of AIDS was the equivalent of a death sentence. In 1987, a drug called azidotimidine, AZT, originally developed in the 1960s to fight cancer, was found to be active against the AIDS virus. The FDA and the National Cancer Institute, who tested AZT against animal cells infected with HIV, confirmed that the drug blocked viral replication. This was a huge discovery, but they could not approve its use for the millions of people infected with HIV until its safety profile was established. But the huge pressure created by the increasing number of people dying from this disease pushed the FDA to put the review of AZT on a fast track. The drug was given randomly to 150 patients with AIDS, while another 150 received a placebo, a non-active pill, for six months. It was a double-blind study, meaning neither the patient nor the physician knew who was taking the active drug or the placebo. Although patients on AZT had multiple side effects, the drug was found to be relatively safe. Four weeks within the study, it was stopped for ethical reason. The placebo group had 19 deaths versus only one death for the AZT group. As a result, the FDA approved the first AIDS medication on March 19, 1987, in a record period of 20 months, a process that usually takes up to 10 years. Many controversies were raised regarding the fast approval, the effect of the drug, but this was the first gleam of hope that something was working against the AIDS virus that was now causing a major threat all over the world. Today, there is an arsenal of 45 different HIV drugs called antiretrovirals in at least nine classes, each aimed at fighting the virus at a specific level of its reproductive cycle. When used in combination, the way we often treat cancer, they have two major impacts. First, they produce the Lazarus effect, meaning bringing back to life AIDS patients who are dying. The life expectancy of a 20-year-old patient has increased from one to two years in the early 1980s to 53 years today. Hence, AIDS patients on antiretroviral drugs have a normal life expectancy. The second impact is that AIDS patients taking regularly their medication can no longer transmit the virus to others. And treatment works as prevention. The other serious issue was the cost of this medicine at 20 to $30,000 a year that prevented access to the most vulnerable populations. On the front page of an issue of Newsweek in 2000, there was a photo of the miracle drugs to, to fight AIDS, and the following was written. There are treatments for AIDS, and this photograph is the closest many will ever get to them. This also proved to be wrong. Two years later, in 2002, the United Nations created the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. And in 2003, the United States, under President George Bush, created PEPFAR, the President Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. For the first time in the world, a country, the USA, targeted a specific disease, AIDS, and provided huge resources that have helped to save millions of lives, particularly toward the developing world, making it possible not only to slow down, but particularly to reverse the course of the AIDS pandemic. In 2000, there were less than one million patients on antiretroviral therapy in the world, including only 6,000 for the entire African continent, which bears the brunt of the epidemic. In 2016, there were 20 million people on antiretroviral therapy, including 70% in sub-Saharan Africa. How did this miracle happen? Scientific breakthroughs, political leadership leading to global solidarity, shared responsibility and community engagement at the local level made the impossible become possible. The successful AIDS model will be used to fight tuberculosis, 
which since 2014 exceeds AIDS and malaria as the largest cause of death from an infectious disease in the world. A physician is also a humanist. What you did not learn in medical school or in specialized reviews, you will learn it from your patients, but only if you take the time to listen to them. Medicine is a profession like no other. It is more a vocation than a profession. You must be at all times at the service of your patients by day and by night. Give special attention to each patient. After all, they will share their secrets with you and give you access to the most intimate parts of their body. One day, you also will be a patient and you will also expect to be treated with respect and dignity. While you should be honest with your patients, you should never destroy their hope. Remember that you are often their very last hope. A physician is also a healer. There is no greater joy in life than the capacity to heal. This amazing gift should make you should not make you arrogant. Arrogance will prevent you to learn from your mistakes. You should have the humility to know your limits and call on another physician when needed. You should be compassionate for those that you cannot cure. Your presence, your hand, will often be enough to comfort them. A physician is also a leader who's ready to tackle challenges big and small to make a difference. A leader is the chief of a team with each member, every single one of them, essential for the success of the mission. A leader has a passion for excellence that is passed down to the entire team. As you see, a physician is at the same time a man of science, a humanist, a healer, and a leader. This is why your task is so difficult. My final message to you is simple. Stay focused on science, be at all times at the service of your patients, dream big and keep your hopes high. As fashion designer Tori Birch said, if it does not scare you, you're probably not dreaming big enough. We need you to dream big. Perhaps one of you will help discover and effective and safe vaccines against AIDS or tuberculosis. The world is capable of solidarity and humanity. All is possible when science and humanity converge towards a common goal. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pop. We have the honor today uh, to have the State University of New York Upstate Medical University award a second honorary degree to Faith Keeper Tracy Shenandoah. Mr. Thomas Taylor, Chair of the Upstate Medical University Council, will read the citation. SUNY Board of Trustee member Eunice Lewin will confer the degree. Mr. James Sparks, Upstate Medical University Council member, will assist me with the hooding. Faith Keeper Tracy Shenandoah, Doctor of Humane Letters. You are distinguished in your humanism and lifelong service to the well-being of natal, native peoples and all people. You are honored as a spiritual advisor and ceremonial leader for the Onondaga Nation and the Iroquois Confederacy. You have been bestowed with respect as a healer you accepted the call for one of the highest leadership roles in Native culture, the mantle of faith keeper, which is an arduous lifelong journey of service to others. You have often been referred to as a doctor's doctor, so respected by colleagues that they look to you for advice and choose you as their own doctor. You are known to provide round the clock spiritual, physical, and medical help, encouragement and support wherever and whenever needed. You have witnessed births, deaths, illness, relationship problems, tragedies, and struggles. In your humble manner, you promote themes of peace, strength of mind and heart, and healing 
never seeking adulation or political gain. You are greatly admired as the cornerstone of spirituality. You honor the occasion when called by families to come to Upstate University Hospital for end of life ceremony for which doctors, nurses, and staff have benefited by your soft words and kind heart when carrying out respected traditions. You have received international accolades for serving as spiritual advisor for the Iroquois National Lacrosse Team through your support for players to sustain a good mind, a good spirit in their lives and in their play. Your contributions as teacher and healer are unparalleled. You live the values espoused by Upstate Medical University for the people we both serve. For your contributions and dedication in all these fields, the State University of New York is pleased to confer upon you the degree of Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters, given this 20th day of May, 2018. I have the honor to present Faith Keeper Tracy Shenandoah as a candidate for the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. By the virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of the State University of New York, the faculty of the State University of New York concurring, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, and invest you with the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I hand you this diploma and direct that you be vested with the hood appropriate to your degree. My sincere congratulations. We will now hear remarks from Dr. Shenandoah. Yawaha, Nakamenda, I went to your so water. I got sent no name again, Hanaki, Hanakagun yester, Nakamenda. I hear Naki Oke. Was always walking to go ahead, go to Yasser, go to Toka. Big thanksgivings I give out today for this great honor they bestow on me and to be in the company of all these doctors, newly graduates, accomplished doctors, instructors, and all the faculty here who helped to work this, to get this going together to help this, this facility work today. It's almost speechless, it feels so good. As we're taught in our culture where I come from, the Onondaga Nation and the Iroquois Confederacy, whenever we meet as a small group or a large group, we have a special way we open meetings up. So today, bear with me, I'll do a huge, a drastic, abbreviation of this, you might call it a prayer. We call it greetings to all of creation, starting with our people first. So all the doctors here, newly, newly graduates, all the professors, instructors, teachers, all the people here, everybody, bring our minds together as one people and one mind, and may we greet one another, so be it our minds. To our Mother Earth, where we walk upon, continuously to give us her strength. We take from her everything so we can live a peaceful life. Everything comes from Earth, where we come from as people. In that direction, we direct our words, and we greet and we thank our Mother of the Earth. And now to the plant life on Earth, the many different grasses, the many different kinds of plants, you might call weeds, 
they all have a purpose. They may be medicine or food for sustenance. And the many hanging fruits we call berries or fruits will bring them all as one bundle together and we greet them all for carrying on their duty, sustain our lives. We greet them and thank them. So be it our minds. And then to the trees, the small shrubs and the taller trees, they also are there for our benefit. Sometimes we look to them when we need medicine. They have powers to help us heal and mend our bodies and mend our minds. The taller trees, we use the harder woods to make our tools. Some use it to make lacrosse sticks for the game of lacrosse. So all these shrubs and trees, we bring them together, we greet them and thank them for carrying on their duties the way the, the, way the Creator planned it. So be it our minds. And now to the life-giving food we call Gyunhekwi, the life-giving sustenance foods that most people get at the supermarkets. The main ones are corn, beans, and squash, our sustenance, the people we came from, but all the life-giving foods that strengthen our bodies on a daily basis. We greet them and thank them, so be it our minds. And now to the waters, the many different water lives on earth, the wells and springs that come from deep in the ground, the veins of water that run underneath the ground, they carry Mother Earth's life blood, the many streams and creeks and rivers, the ponds of water, the huge lakes, the great oceans, who are the grandmothers of all the bodies of water. We we'll greet all these waters as one, and we greet them and thank them for carrying on and sustaining our lives, so be it our minds. And to the soft blowing winds, sometimes to bring us a warm wind. This summertime, it's usually warm wind what we feel from them. And gradually it will cool off in this, in this fall time, then winter time. As the year goes around, we feel the winds constantly doing their duty. They bring us fresh air to cool the earth or they warm the earth, all for our benefit, part of the life cycle. We greet the soft blowing winds. We greet them and we thank them, so be it our minds. To our grandfather thunders who reside in the West, we hear their thundering voices and we give thanks to them. They replenish all the bodies of water, the springs, streams, the lakes. Their thundering voices are medicine for us, for our people. They have a special duty when we hear their thundering voices. In our culture, we are told there are fierce looking beings under the ground who are held at bay beneath the ground when they hear our grandfather thunder. So we give thanksgiving when they hear them. So today we bring our minds as one mind. We greet and we thank our grandfathers the thunder. So be it our minds. Now we look skyward, we see there our eldest brother, the sun. Every day we receive his warmth. He sends his sun rays down and gives us brightness. He brightens every day for us. When springtime comes, he warms the waters, he warms the air, he warms Mother Earth that new life may come up again. So in that direction, we direct our words, we greet and we thank our eldest brother, the sun. So be it our minds. Now our grandmother moon, we see at the nighttime, she also has special duties. The creator gave her a special duty to work other women folk on earth so that our children may be born in a healthy way. And also she works with the tidal waves and the great waters, the big waters, the oceans. So in her direction, we direct our words, we greet and we thank our grandmother, the moon, so be it our minds and the stars in the sky. They also have special duty. They continuously dampen the earth, dampen the plant life. And we use it to measure time, and measure traveling. So every night, we greet them and thank the stars in the sky for doing their duties the way the Creator meant it. So be it our minds. Now in my culture we come from, we call that would say 
the four spiritual beings who protect us. They have a power to watch over us and guide our minds. We have frustration, we have anger, depression. We ask on them. Night and day, they are ready and willing to help us straighten our minds out. So their direction, we direct our words. We greet and we thank the four protectors. So be it our minds. And in our history, we've been very lucky people. We had messengers sent by Creator to us. Many ages ago, in the early days of our people on earth, a messenger was sent to us. He brought what we call the four main ceremonies that we use on a yearly basis around the, around the year to thank Creator and thank all creation. Another messenger, he brought us the great law of peace. When Creator noticed, we turned to warlike ways, we're hurting one another, and many streams ran red with blood. He sent the peace, peacemaker to bring a great message of peace, the great law of peace. And also, a messenger we call Handsome Lake. He brought a message to us when you realize our people are losing our ways, we're changing too much. When the other people came across the great waters, they brought different ways and it pulled, pulled us away from our original instructions. This was Handsome Lake. So the three messengers there, we greet them and thank them for delivering their message and sustaining good mindedness amongst our people. So be it our minds. The Creator in the sky world, we're constantly receiving His compassion, His love. Everything complete on the earth, He has made it that way, and the sky that we can live a good life. So that direction, we direct our words, we greet and we thank our Creator, so be it, our minds. So this greetings it was a brief, a very extreme ex abbreviation. So my elder teachers would go for an hour, an hour and a half. And in my language, Onondaga, or any of the five languages of the Iroquois Confederacy. So now, today we're here to honor all these young minds who decided to take this path to be doctors. We're here to greet them and thank them for taking it upon themselves. The medicine people of the world are enriching today, and we are made a stronger group by you people committing to this. So we greet you and thank you. Your new doctors and your accomplished doctors, all in one, we greet you and thank you. So be it our minds. When, when Daniel Larag Arena asked me about this, accepting this nomination last year, my first response to, was to tell her, in my culture, we're taught to be humble people and not to put each other up on a pedestal. We're all of the same height and equal value. So I explained this to her. She gave me time to think about it, but she told me I could be helping a lot of people. I can be helping modern medicine. So I thought it over. I consulted with a few elders of mine around the Confederacy, a few peers that do the same work. They gave me a few ideas, but pretty much, pretty much the same ideas I had. So first of all, the greetings I just did. Greetings to all of creation that creates in us. It brings a great heartfelt feeling into us. If you listen and you feel, and you feel this message. And when you feel that before any ceremony, in our, our culture we have dozens of different kinds of ceremonies to help our people. Whether they're sick or depressed or hurt, bodily injured, internal injuries, we have ceremonies that are going on around the year. This greeting is first, and it creates a beautiful, heartfelt feeling inside. And from there, we can start, when you have that feeling, we can start healing. And with that forms a good mindedness, a positive mind, directed to the one that's sick, or the people that are sick or ailing. So our, our culture, everything starts in the mind and the heart, any kind of healing. We have dozens of kinds of medicine, herbal medicine, 
spiritual song medicine. We have seclusion, seclusion medicine, people have to fast. But these medicines given to us by Creator ages ago are still going on. They all start with a good mind, a good heart. So all you new medical students and accomplished doctors, I strongly encourage you when you're practicing medicine to help one another. Try your best to use a good mind, use a good heart. All these years you studied medicine, all the hard work you put in, your teachers had compassion for you and they admired the work you put in the time. So in years to come, as you become accomplished doctors, no matter where you go, maybe across this Turtle Island you might go somewhere, maybe across the big seas, the oceans. Try to remember the compassion they gave to you when you were learning. And spread that out when you're teaching other youth the same way. Keep the compassion going into the future. We are told amongst our people, before a person is born, Creator gives them some kind of duty, some kind of gift. And nobody knows that for years. When you're born, you don't know that. Some are accomplished lacrosse players, athletes. Some are beautiful dancers or singers. And a very special, special group are, are healers, medicine people. For accepting that duty Creator gave to you and recognize that within your heart, I thank you and I greet you. But before you were born, he gave you that duty. It's a huge honor to feel that in your heart and know what Creator gave you and follow that path. So I greet you all and thank you for taking that. So be in our minds. Now in closing today, I'll just, these greetings and compassionate words not only for the doctors, but on a daily life, we need to use it as a people, as a healer, as a doctor. Creator give you that compassion in your heart to heal people. But it did not stop there. He gave you that heartfelt feeling and the compassion to heal people. That spreads out to all life. That's what he means by that. So open your hearts and minds a little wider. Consider Mother Earth. Consider the environment. Without Mother Earth, we don't survive. Without clean air, clean water, we cannot survive. So any way you can, I encourage you to look in that direction as the environment, the life cycle we have put in, that we are part of and we are not in control of. We're only one little part of it. So encourage in that direction, so be it our minds. So for now, so for now, from now on and for the rest of your lives, remember to carry good mindedness and a heartfelt compassion that you receive when you're when you're learning and spread that so the future generations can feel that, so the earth can feel that, so all the life cycle can feel that, so be it our minds. Donato. Nyawaha. Dr. Licinio will now present faculty awards. He will be assisted by Dr. Julie Rawls-White, Dean of Student Affairs. The class of 2018 recognizes faculty and departments 
by nominating them to receive awards from the Medical Alumni Association. Would this year's recipients of the Medical Alumni Awards please come forward as I announce your name. The Philip B. Armstrong Award, Dr. Margaret Maimani, Department of Teaching Award for Basic Sciences, Cell and Developmental Biology. This award will be accepted by Dr. Margaret Maimani. The Syracuse Campus Clinical Department Teaching Award, Dr. Amit Damoon. The Syracuse Campus Clinical Department Teaching Award, Internal Medicine. This award will be accepted by Dr. Sarah Lappin. The Binghamton Campus Clinical Faculty Teaching Award, Dr. Katherine Holmes. The Binghamton Campus Clinical Department Teaching Award, Surgery. This award will be accepted by Dr. Rajesh Dave. Dr. Licinio will now present the Leonard Toe Humanism and Medicine Faculty Award. This award, given by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, recognizes and honors a faculty member who demonstrates the highest standard of integrity, excellence, compassion, altruism, respect, empathy, and service. Dr. Stephen Knoll has been selected by the graduating class to receive this award. Would Dr. Sarah Lappin please come forward to accept the award on his behalf? As we conclude our ceremony, I would like to remind you of the reception immediately following it at the Campus Activities Building back on campus. As a reminder, the graduates will recess to the outside of the building. You will need to meet your graduate outside. Please remain seated until the faculty and graduates have exited. Please join me once again in congratulating all of our graduates, honorary degree recipients, and awardees. Thank you.